Hi everyone, uh, I'm Madison and this is my coolest musical instruments presentation on the Sheng. So you may or may not have seen this instrument before, but it might look a little weird to some of you. I'll be talking a little bit about myself, what my instrument is and what it can do. Um, so I'm, um, Okay, it says I'm an eighth grader at Challenger Ardenwood, but I'm actually going into ninth grade this year at American High. And um, I was one of the first members of Eternity Band. Um, I play the Sheng at the California Youth Chinese Symphony um, since 2017. And I'm currently a member of their senior orchestra. I've also been playing the piano for seven years. So I sometimes do that for Eternity Band. Um, the sheng, which I have here, is a polyphonic woodwind. Um, so the woodwind part means that it's a, it's one of the one of the group of instruments which um, I can make sound by blowing air through it, and the polyphonic part means that it can play multiple melodies simultaneously. Although that's a little hard to do. Um, it's a traditional Chinese instrument, and it's pretty old. Um, over here is an illustration of the 36 key soprano sheng, which is the type of sheng that I use. Um, and it's right next to me. Uh, here's, um, so there are actually a, a lot of different types of the sheng and they have different amounts of pipes, different structure and so on. But they all pretty much have the same basic parts which are illustrated on this diagram. And I will go into more detail about the, about the parts later on but you can see the pipes of the sheng, the mouthpiece, and the little metal keys, which are over here. Um, so you can actually see that the different types of sheng also look pretty, well, different, and they come in different sizes. So for example, the really big wide one over there, um, it has 42 pipes and it has a wider range than the sheng I use. So um, the Shang first originated in China and the earliest record of this instrument dates back to um, 1100 BC. And the oldest actual instrument that um, archeologists found was from around 100 BC. So that was during um, China's Han Dynasty. Uh, earlier models of the Sheng, they would have um, less pipes, so normally 17 or 21. And today, some of them, well, they have way more. So the standard one has 36, and some can have like 42. Um, I haven't seen Shengs with more pipes than that, but they're probably out there. Um, and this painting I have over here is, um, it's a painting of a lady with a Sheng from the Tang Dynasty. So that's like, um, maybe uh, 600 to 900 AD. Um, so the reason why there are so many different types of Sheng is because it's been around for so long. And so we have some older types that people still use and some more modern versions. But like I said earlier, these different versions, they all have the same basic parts with the same basic functions. So the parts, the main parts are the vertical pipes, the keys, the bass, the reeds, and the mouthpiece. Um, so here's um, back to the earlier illustration of my sheng. So first up here, we have the pipes. Um, and this is where the noise comes out. So um, different sheng, again, they might have different numbers of pipes, but they all will have pipes. And this is, um, well, they can have different lengths, different widths. So you can see that the ones on the side are like a little bit smaller, while the ones in the middle are like big. Um, the next part is the keys. So some sheng like mine have keys and you can see the metal keys over here. Um, some don't have keys and they just have holes in there. Um, there are differences in fingering and like the range of notes, which I will get to later again, between the uh, key, sheng, key sheng, which has keys and the traditional sheng, which doesn't have keys. Um, the base of the sheng, um, it's at the bottom and it has slots that hold the pipes. Um, so inside the base are the reeds. So when I blow into the sheng, that's where the air goes. Um, and it's, it's an airtight base. 
So if I have if I don't have it locked properly, then it will be leaking air and it won't work. And yeah, it's got a little bit of a resonance chamber and it supports the entire instrument. So when I'm holding my instrument, I will hold it by the base to make sure that nothing pops off. Um, and finally are the reeds. So the reeds are um, these little green tabs at the bottom and vibrations in the reeds are what cause the sound to go into the pipes. Different reeds have different lengths and that causes them to have different pitches. So now, um, all right, one more thing. So I have the mouthpiece and this is the metal pipe. Sometimes it won't have the metal pipe, but it will have a hole in the base. And this is what I blow into. So I have to blow and press a key at the same time to make noise. Yeah, so now you've seen this and you have some idea of what a sheng looks like and how it works. But what does it sound like? And that's really what matters for a musical instrument. So first I'll play a scale for you. So yeah, that's pretty much how it sounds. Um, this, okay, so this slide is basically how high or how low the sheng can go, this is its range. So, um, well, it varies for the different shungs, but the one that I have with the 36 keys, um, I have the arrow illustrated next to a piano keyboard. So that's the ends of the arrow are basically how high and how low the shung can go. Um, if you want it more in more technical terms, so the lowest note is a G3 and the highest note is um, F sharp six. Um, for comparison for other instruments, so the piano goes from A0 to C8, um, and th is, that's basically what I'm referencing off of. Um, for the C flute, which is another popular woodwind instrument, goes from C4 to D7, and the oboe goes from B flat three to A6. So that's kind of how it measures up compared to the other woodwind instruments. Um, the shun can be used in pretty much anything from a solo piece to an orchestra. And in an orchestra, which, well, I play in one, um, in an orchestra, it can do both melody and accompaniment. So it's pretty useful. Um, I've seen it used by Western composers as well as Chinese ones. So here is the key map of my sheng and it's, it's a little bit different from the keys on say a piano. So we've got three rows of 36 pipes and each row has 12 pipes. Um, it doesn't go um, low from one side to high on the other side. Um, so the lowest keys, um, the ones with the lowest pitch are actually arranged um, right in the middle. And the ones with the highest pitch are like all the way on the outside. Um, so I use a thumb and three of my fingers to play. Uh, I use my pinky when I'm desperate. So um, I've colored in which ones I generally use um, which fingers for. So this, um, this kind of purplish color is my left ring finger. Um, left middle finger is, well, it can generally reach further actually. So um, it's the pinkish color. Uh, orange is my left index finger. So that entire row and my left thumb covers the red area. Um, my right ring finger is the kind of brownish color. My right middle finger basically just has one job, it's C4. So that would be the green one. Um, my right index finger takes the middle row for the yellow and my right thumb takes care of the blue. And um, for reference on how that key map works over here. So the mouthpiece, which I have over here, um, it would be between G3 and G sharp three. So it's a little bit complicated, a little bit not completely in order, but after a while you get used to it. So there are a couple common techniques that people do with the show. So uh, first I have chords. So the show can play multiple notes at, at once, um, unlike some other musical instruments that are woodwinds. So um, I just press three of the keys at once and I can just blow and that would create a chord. So the first one I'll demonstrate um, is the C major chord. So 
so um, I'll be playing C, E, and G. And the blacked out notes are what I'll be pressing. So it's. And if I were to blow them all at once. So that's the first chord. Um, and I can do another one for D major. So again, the blacked out keys are what I'm pressing. And it's. So in this case, I'm using my left thumb, left index finger, and left ring finger. Uh, sorry. So um, some other techniques that I can do are staccato. So um, staccato is used in a lot of instruments, but it basically means like short and choppy notes. So. So um, I use my tongue for this technique and um, basically use it to control the air. Um, next is double notes. So like the name says, I play each note twice instead of once. And again, I'll be using my tongue for, for this. So it'll be like. Um, and then there are a lot of other techniques, um, not all of which I have got completely the hang of. So um, here's a video of a professional doing these techniques, and some of them are pretty impressive. Yeah, so that that concludes my presentation. Um, thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed it.